And there it is, the moment that we've all been waiting for. The money is shifting back to value. But is it gonna last? Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. Has there been a lot of money made this week? I remember saying that back in like February or something. It was ridiculous. But after I said that in February or March, or it might have even been in April, value investors had a terrible time all the way up until this week. And the moment that I heard the vaccine was coming out, I thought, I reckon this is going to be a good day. <laughs> So I did my first live video and thank you everyone for watching that because you watched me make about a thousand pounds in five minutes. And it's brought a real sense of euphoria back to the value investors and the tech investors are feeling a little bit sour. I imagine over the next few days, you're gonna see value investors and dividend investors shouting, oh look, we were right all along. But I don't think it's that simple. The vaccine was always going to be a catalyst for cyclicals and value plays to return to some sort of normalcy, but they're probably not going to see silly 400% growth like we saw from Peloton and Zoom. We might, and it's a very big might, see some very slow, steady growth back to normal for the value stocks. I don't care too much about capital appreciation. All I really want is my stocks to stay pretty steady. My focus is on dividend growth. I find it a lot easier to predict and I find it's a great way to get me into some good companies with great cash flows. I've tried to explain it like I use it as some sort of filter just to get me to good companies. It narrows down the search terms a little bit. And just on the day that the vaccine released, we saw massive growth in some companies that have really lagged behind. REITs were a big sector that was lagging quite far behind. But one of my new companies, Avalon Bay Communities, which I've got a video coming up on them pretty soon. So far, we've seen a 13% rise this week. Diageo was another company that I was so far behind on. But now, 16% in one week has pushed me 10% in the clear. It's crazy. JP Morgan, I've managed to buy right at the bottom, up 13% this week. Legal and General is another one I've bought right at the bottom. I'm now 21% up on Legal and General just in two days. <laughs> and Raytheon. Raytheon has been a thorn in my side for a good couple of months, up 19% in two days. I'm now 4% in the clear on Raytheon. Even Royal Dutch Shell, a company that no one expected to bounce back for another like two years, has jumped 14% in two days. Oil has massively recovered with WTI and Brent pushing over 40 now. Store Capital, another massive REIT, gone up 16%. And Disney was another massive one with a 14% rise in two days. These are companies that never make these size moves and they're not supposed to. Still though, AT&T lags far, far behind, only up 5% this week. I am now beginning to fully believe that nothing is gonna save AT&T ever. <laughs> And the ones that are now dragging down my share price are the tech stocks that I've recently got into, like Digital Realty Trust, a REIT that should have gone up with all the other REITs, but it didn't because it's technically a tech stock. Microsoft has come down nearly 4% today, and Segro, a company that I would consider a stay-at-home stock because it pushes so many warehouse companies, is now looking like it's coming back into value. It's dangerous to say that this time it's different with regards to the rotation, but let's also realize that this rotation was occurring before the announcement of the vaccine. All you had to do was look at the industrials and materials to give you that clue. Now there's a very fundamental reason to support the continuing rotation into the cyclicals, into the industrials, even into the financials, which have been left for dead but are coming back. And it's just as simple as there is a path to normalcy ahead of us. Here's the one qualification I want to make. If you're looking at yesterday's rallying and saying, oh, shucks, I missed it, relax, calm down, because unfortunately there is terrible news coming on the virus. Scott, I know you've been all over it. I don't need to tell you that, but, you know, the numbers, um, the really bad numbers about deaths lag the case count by about a month, which means at the end of this year it's just going to be awful. And, um, and that's going to depress the economy, not depress as in depression, but it's going to hurt economic growth, and it's going, to, it's going to give you an opportunity to get into this rotation, which is one you need to be playing for the next year's plural. You're going to have an economic recovery on the back of a vaccine and treatment. Cyclicals are where you want to be. That man from the 1930s is right. 
it's going to be a very slow and steady recovery for the value stocks. There's a lot of things ahead. There's more deaths coming. There could be a lot of pressure on the NHS this winter. Tech stocks and lockdown stocks aren't going anywhere. Take a look at Zoom, for example. Now, Zoom is a company that I don't understand. I don't understand how it's done so well with so many competitors that do exactly the same thing. I don't know why this company has been picked out as better than the others. But what I can say for Zoom and a lot of other tech stocks is now PE ratios matter. Because in January, Zoom still had a PE ratio of 218. And right now, it's only trading at a PE ratio of 207. So now Zoom is actually less valuable compared to its earnings than when it was in January. So now you can say, great, Zoom is actually back under its normal value. You can say, wow, time to buy. And this all depends on how rose tinted your glasses are with Zoom. Because Zoom has had an awesome time with earnings during the pandemic. Loads of people have signed up and started using and bought subscriptions all to talk to their families. So their earnings have skyrocketed and that's brought down their PE ratio. When compared to operating cash flow, the story is exactly the same. So as a Zoom investor, you've got to figure out now whether these earnings were just a blip or they're going to continue on into the future. I couldn't possibly comment on Zoom. I don't use Zoom. Every time I've wanted to talk to my family during the lockdown, it was always done on Google or done on FaceTime. And at work, Microsoft have a much more advanced system in Teams. So I wouldn't know, but the analysts definitely think that Zoom is on its way up. Genuine Impact seems to have Zoom listed as very overvalued, but very good company. The quality of the company is very high. Its financial strength is very high. And from fast graphs, we can definitely see it's got a lot of operating cash flow. It's valued at very expensive right now, probably just because of the massive PE. And it's got very strong momentum. We've seen it grow a lot during lockdown. So just based on the simple metrics, most people would think that Zoom is very overvalued. But using their January PE versus their current PE, you could say that actually, Zoom is probably undervalued in comparison to what it was. It was already on its way up pre-pandemic. So there's no reason to say it won't continue to go up while it capitalizes on the situation it's had. So I don't believe tech is going to crash anytime soon. It may grow a bit slower than cyclicals and value, but value is definitely having a good week. Whether it continues this progress or not, I don't really know. And I don't really care. The important thing with investing is not to follow the trends. It's not to follow your emotions. It's to buy companies that you think are good for the future and invest in them solidly. Continue and buy and hold long term. That's my plan. That's my strategy. Find companies with good cash flows, good valuations, and let them just do their thing for the long term. And it's the same with growth and innovation companies. With innovation, you should be investing in companies that you think are going to change the world. It shouldn't matter if these tech companies have a little slump over the next couple of days, couple of weeks, maybe even couple of months. The key to my investing strategy isn't just dividends and passive income. You've got to be invested in solid companies with good cash flows that are going to be around in the future. They still need to be effective and contributing towards the economy as the years go on. And I think I've proven to myself that I can do it. I've just sat through a pandemic while Neo and Tesla and all the fucking SPAC stocks have started going up and down. I've sat there with my little value companies and just let them slowly return when they're ready. And I feel like I'm just gonna keep on doing that, no matter if these stocks just crash next week. I feel like slow and steady is gonna get me to my target one day, and I'm happy with that. Thank you very much for watching everyone. The investment app that I use is called Trading212. If you wanted to get into investing, there is a link in the description below. If you sign up through that link, you can get a free share that's up to 100 pounds, and then you can start taking advantage of all this value. Feel free to check me out on Instagram. I post there from time to time. And don't forget to take a look at the Brisk Gourd. There's a link in the description below. It's completely free. And I wanted to talk a bit more about the Brisk Gourd because there's a lot more to it than it just being a chat room. The moderators in there have worked really hard to set up some really cool bots. We've got bots that tell you when companies hike their dividends and lower their dividends. We've got another bot that tells you about all of the earnings reports that are going to be released that week. We've even got another bot that keeps you up to date with all of the buys and sells of the ARK Invest ETFs every single day. And one of my favorites is the Daily Morning Brew. Every single day that thing pops up on the Discord. You click it and you can go through and have a look at what Morning Brew has got to say that day. 
Thanks again for watching everyone and if you enjoyed this content or found it interesting, please feel free to like, subscribe and invest.